In this lecture, we're going to cover the topic of async pipe. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know when to use the async pipe and how to use async pipe with promises and also observables. So normally to render the result of a promise or an observable, we have to wait for a callback, store the result of the callback as a variable, and then bind to that variable in a template. But with async pipe, we can use promises and observables directly in our template without having to store the result on an intermediate property or variable. Async pipe accepts as an argument an observable or a promise, calls subscribe or attaches a then handler, then waits for the asynchronous result before passing that result through to the caller. Let's demonstrate how it works with an example. I have a very, very simple plunker in front of you. We just have one component called async pipe component. Well, actually two, we have the main app component as well, which consumes the async pipe component. And right now it's just showing a Twitter bootstrap card class with a title of async pipe. In the async pipe component, we have a property called promise data, which holds a string. We have a function called get promise, which returns a new promise, which uses set timeout and resolves three seconds later with the string promise complete. And then in our constructor, we call get promise, we call then, we get the value that is returned in the then handler, and we store this value on promise data. So then to show this working, we have to actually bind to promise data in our templates. Let's do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm showing you how we would solve this problem without using async pipe. We would just get the promise, call then, and then store whatever we want to store on a local variable or property, and then bind to that in our templates. Let's have a look to see what happens when we run this. So we ran the application and then three seconds later, the promise complete was displayed on the screen. Now to save time, to save time in coding, we can use the async pipe in the template and bind to the promise directly. So instead of saying promise data, we just call it promise. It's not going to be a string anymore. I actually want to store a reference to the promise itself. So the type is promise, but then I pass to the promise type a type of string because this promise is going to return a string. And then in our constructor, we don't subscribe via the then handler. We just delete that completely. I then want to store the promise on our promise property. So we type this promise is equal to this dot get promise. And just double check in the get promise function that you actually are returning a promise. So get promise returns a promise and we store just the promise on our property. And nowhere in our component are we calling then. So to consume, to use this promise directly from our template, we now just need to type promise and we pipe that to the async pipe. So now if I run this, the card's displayed, and then three seconds later, promise complete is displayed. So this version of the code resulted in the same behavior as before. We just saved ourselves from writing a then callback and storing some intermediate data on the component. So that's how async pipe works with promises. How does it work with observables? I'm just gonna restructure our example here so it works with observables. Now I create a new property called observable data, and that's gonna hold a number. I then create another property called subscription, which is gonna hold the observable subscription itself. 
I'm then going to replace the get promise function with a get observable function. I'm just going to paste that one in. This is a very simple observable that we're returning. It just uses the interval operator, takes the first 10, and for each item, it runs it through a map which squares each of the numbers. So zero would return zero, one would be return one, two then turns into four, three then turns into nine. Yes, nine. But in order to use an observable like this in our Angular code, we need to import it. So let's go to the top. We're going to import observable from rxjs slash rx. And then in our constructor, I'm going to, well, call subscribe observable. And then let's go ahead and create our function subscribe observable. So in the subscribe observable function, we get an instance of the, well, we get the observable, we call subscribe on it. Then every time it emits a value, we store that value on the observable data property and then this whole thing here this subscribe function here actually returns something called a subscription and we actually also want to store that subscription as well on our component now the reason we want to store this subscription is that when for whatever reason this component is destroyed we then also need to destroy our subscription so that this essentially this code stops running and functioning because if we don't have this component there's no need for this observable to continue calling back this function so to do that we use the lifecycle hook the on destroy lifecycle hook and to you to do that we add the function ng on destroy and inside there we need to call unsubscribe on our subscription but it's always a good thing just to double check to make sure that the subscription has already happened. So we first check if you've got a subscription and then we call unsubscribe on our subscription. Now with lifecycle hooks, it's also just a really good idea to import the interface and make sure the class that we're using extends or implements that interface as well. So let's do that also. Oh, I've already included it in here. So now I just need to implement it. And we don't need the promise there anymore as well. And so the last thing we need to do is just render out the observable data in our templates. I'm just going to paste it in here. Now, again, I'm not using the async pipe, so I'm just going to show you what this does. Hopefully this works. And there we go. Now the async pipe is running. The observable is pumping out data and we're rendering it to the screen. By using async pipe, we don't need to perform the subscribe function and we don't need to store any intermediate data on our component. So let me rewrite this to use the async pipe instead. So I create a property called observable that will hold an observable, an observable which will emit numbers. We don't need to store the subscription anymore. We just store a reference to the observable on our observable property. As I said, we don't need to subscribe to our observable anymore, so we can remove that. And a really useful feature, very useful feature of the async pipe with respect to observables is that the async pipe will keep a track of whether or not the observable is needed anymore. And if it isn't, it will unsubscribe from it automatically. So again, we actually don't need to remember to unsubscribe from the observable in our component. So we can remove our ng on destroy function.
And now if we run this, we see the same functionality, the same result as before. But we've just rewritten it in a fewer lines of code and we haven't had to handle a subscription or unsubscription. So to summarize, async pipe is a convenience function which makes rendering data from observables and promises much easier. For promises, it automatically adds a then callback. And for observables, it automatically subscribes to the observable, renders the output, and then also unsubscribes when the component is destroyed. So we don't need to handle the cleanup logic ourselves. That's it for built-in pipes. Next up, we're going to look at creating our own custom pipe.